It's new. It's amazing. It's Prell. P-R-E-L-L. Prell Shampoo. Yes, Procter & Gamble's new Radiant Cream Shampoo in the handy tube. Prell brings you The Life of Riley. <laughs> Shampoo that removes unsightly dandruff, leaves hair radiantly lovely, presents The Life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. For ten years, Chester A. Riley has worked for the Stevenson Aircraft Corporation in Los Angeles. And now, at long last, he is about to be rewarded for his industry and loyalty. For ten long years, Riley has been waiting for this very day. How much of a bonus are you going to get, Pop? Ah, uh, let's see now. Tomorrow it'll be ten years I worked for the company. I'd get $25 for each year of uninterrupted service. So that's 25 times ten equals... I don't want to carry four. $250, Pop. Five and carry three. Twenty-five times ten is two hundred and fifty, Daddy. Thirty-eight and carry five. For heaven's sake, Riley, two hundred and fifty. Three, carry nine, plus thirty-eight minus seven. <laughs> Multiplied by seven. I got it! Two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, that's a lot of money. When do you collect? Tomorrow. Let's get a television set, huh, Pop? How about it, No, huh? no, 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 nothing to do it. No television in this house. I ain't paying 250 bucks so I can get cockeyed. <laughs> <laughs> well, what this family needs is a car. Oh, but a television now, set. Now, wait a minute. It took me ten years to get this dough. We ain't going to spend it foolishly. You're absolutely right, dear. Well, sure, I got to think of the future. Oh, you're going to put it in the bank. No, no, I'm going to buy a mink. A mink? Yeah, you know, one of them little animals that dresses up like women. <laughs> yeah, I want to start a mink ranch. What in the world are you talking oh, about? I have an income. I read an article about it. There's a fortune in it. You start with only one mink. And in a few months, you got two minks, and then four minks, and then eight minks. From one mink? Oh. <laughs> you mean it's like the bees? Well, okay, so then we'll get two minks, a boy mink and a girl mink. We'll introduce them to each other, and they fall in love and get married, and before you know it, some rich dame on Park Avenue is wearing a mink coat, and we got $5,000 in the bank. <laughs> now, don't be ridiculous, Riley. The minute you get that money tomorrow, it goes into the bank, and it stays there. Now, just a minute, Peg. Who worked ten years to get that dough, you or me? You. When I get that check, who's it going to be made out to, you or me? You. And who's the head of the house around here, you or me? You. So who's going to decide what's to be done with this money, you or me? Me. <laughs> well, that's logical. Mm -hmm. It's time we had a little reserve in the bank. What for? Well, suppose you lose your job. Me? L lose my job? <laughs> Don't be silly. I'm setting that job for life. Why, Mr. Stevenson would never fire me. Only today he said to me, Riley, I've been watching you for ten years, and believe me, you're not going anyplace. <laughs> yes, sir, I'm set for life. Well, anything can happen. No, not to me. Why, Stevenson Aircraft couldn't get along without me. Oh, you think so? I know so. You don't understand, Peg. I may not have a classy office with a fancy title, but they couldn't do without me for one minute. Because the plant operates like a big machine. And a machine may have hundreds of parts. But if one little nut is missing, it goes to pieces. <laughs> and at Stevenson Aircraft, I am that nut. <laughs> Hi, Gillis. Hey, come on. Come on, lunch. Oh, Riley, I'm in trouble. Big trouble. Yeah, what's up, Gillis? Riley, the waste has happened. What, Gillis? What? Did your wife leave you? I said the waste, not the best. <laughs> well, what happened? I'm going to get fired. Fired? Why? You know that new machine they just got? The one with the Magno Heterodyne Electrodynamic Gravitator with the Bicyclonic Supercharger? Yeah. I smashed it. How? I tried to open a bottle of Coca-Cola with it. <laughs> oh, Gillis, does the boss know about Oh, it? yeah. Stevens is looking for me right now to fire me. I've been avoiding him, but he keeps chasing me all over the plant. 
Riley, what am I going to do? Now, 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 take it easy, Gillis. But he'll it fire easy. me, sure. What'll I do? No money in the bank. I still owe for the furniture I bought last year. Now, relax, Gillis. And I already sold the furniture. <laughs> and that dough's gone, too. Fired. Believe me, it don't pay to be honest. No. <laughs> now, you take it easy, old pal. You won't get fired. Your friend Riley will see to that. You? Uh, don't kid me, Riley. What can you do? Well, I, uh, well I'll i take the rap for you. I'll say that I done it. But then you'll get fired. <laughs> oh, not me. Stevenson would never let me go. You see, this plant operates like a big machine. I know. You're a nut. <laughs> I can't let you take the risk. There's no risk. Why, Stevenson and me, we're, we're like buddies. He's my buddy. Gillis, I want to talk to you. Shh, here he is. Now, remember, I done it. No, 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 Riley. you got a wife and kids. Oh, I won't let you do it. No, 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 I won't let you. A guy would have to be the lowest thing on earth to let his best pal. No, 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 I won't let you. Well, Gillis, so here you are. Riley done it. He smashed the machine. Riley done it. <laughs> That's right, Mr. Stevenson. I done it, not Gillis. All right, Riley. Oh, thanks, boys. You see, Gillis, what I tell you. Don't get you can't do it, you boy. Fired. No. Boss, Mr. Stevenson, buddy, wait, come back. Be... What a revolting development this is. And because of Gillis, you lost your job? Yeah, fired. Oh, gee, Oh, Dan, Pop. that's terrible. Fired, but I'll have my revenge. Just watch how that whole plant will crumble. Today I'm fired. In a few days, 3,000 men will be out of work. Oh, but Riley, you didn't do anything. You're going right back and tell Stevenson you didn't do it. No, I ain't no squealer. But Riley... Besides, if he can fire me after 10 years, then I don't want to work for him. But I fixed him good when I left. <laughs> you don't know it, but I took along the only key to the washroom. <laughs> If you admitted smashing that machine, he had a right to fire you. That's right. Take his side. Defend that no good, hard hearted monster. <sighs> Daddy, why don't you go back and explain? No, I got my pride. I don't want his job. I'll get another job just like that. Well, I, I, I'm sure you could hold down plenty of jobs, dear, but. Well, suppose you don't get a break. What'll we live now, on? Don't, don't get panicky, Peg. We'll manage fine. You're, you're forgetting we got that $250 reserve in the bank. What, 250 Well, the bonus that I... That I, I, I... I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I got fired three hours before I became eligible. Give me a knife. I want to kill myself. Riley, control yourself. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? Now, now, don't take it like that, dear. It'll be all right. We'll starve. All I got to my name is a key to the washroom. <laughs> What's the most amazing thing? Oh, what, Mother? Well, this ad here in the paper. This market's got a big sale. And listen, butter, 40 cents a pound. Hamburger, 29 cents a pound. Eggs, 30 cents a dozen. Well, well I can't believe it. There must be something wrong. Well, there certainly is. That newspaper's almost 10 years old. <laughs> what? Well, look at the date. Oh, well, for heaven's sake. Where did this come from? Well, Junior's been collecting old newspapers and selling them, and sometimes he reads the funnies here in the house and leaves the papers around. Mm. I knew it was too good to be true. But for a minute there, I thought I'd figured out a way to live on your father's unemployment insurance. Oh, is that you, Riley? Yeah, it's me. Oh, any luck, dear? Nah, nothing. I've been everywhere, Peg. They ain't taking on men. They're laying them off. Well, what about that man you were supposed to see? Hmm? Oh, him. Well, he offered me a job in a laundromat, but I didn't like it. What kind of job? Running a crap game for the men who were waiting there. <laughs> Peg, what'll I do? I, I don't collect unemployment insurance till the end of the week. I, I... Hi, everybody. Hey, guess what? I made three bucks a day helping out at the drugstore. Oh, that's wonderful, Junior. Did you hear that, Riley? Yeah, that's very good, Junior. Uh, Peg, where's my cigars? I left the box on the piano last night. Oh, the box was empty, dear. I threw it out. Oh. Babs, you got a cigar? I don't smoke, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. 
Uh, you sure there's no cigars in the house? Well, if you're short, Papa, let you have a dime for a few cigars. Here. Just a minute. Just what do you think you're doing? Well, well you're broke, aren't you? I wonder... You've to... got your nerve. What do you take me for, anyway? A bum in the park? Well, gee, Papa, I didn't... I haven't make... sunk so low that I have to depend on my kids for cigar money. Now, Riley, Junior didn't mean anything. I ain't lit yet, you know. I don't take handouts from nobody. I don't care if I never smoke a cigar again. Well, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. Leave the room, Junior. And don't come back here till you learn how to behave to your father. Go on, take a long walk. And if you walk past the drugstore, buy me a cigar. <laughs> Peg, I... Well, what are you doing with that suitcase? Well, uh, Peg, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. What? But I can't get a job here in Los Angeles. I'm going west to San Francisco. <laughs> the guy told me there's lots of jobs there. Why, I, I won't let you go. I'll send for you and the kids as soon as I land something, Peg. Now, Riley, uh, you'll get a job here. It, it may take a little time, but we'll be all right. Uh, I can get a job. Oh, no. Oh, it's bad enough the kids are working. What do you think people will say when they find out my wife is working? They'll say I'm one of those kept men that women support for their good looks. They'll never say that about you. <laughs> right. Listen, you're, you're being very foolish about this. You can get your old job back if you'll just go to Mr. Stevenson no, and... I told you before, I'll never go back to him. I've got my pride. But you haven't even got the money to go to San Francisco. Oh, yes, I have. I borrowed $40 from Gillis, and he ain't even charging me interest. Oh, please, dear, I'll phone your boss. No, this is final. I have made up my head. <laughs> I've got to go. My train leaves in an hour. Hey, what's up? Where are you going, Daddy? Your father's going to San Francisco to look for work. San Francisco? Well, Pop, Daddy, what are you going there well, for? I haven't got time to explain. Your mother will tell you everything. I've I got to go now. Well... We'll go to the station with you, darling. No, I don't like sad partners. It'll be better if we say goodbye here. Well, uh, goodbye, Junior. Well, goodbye, Pop. Look after your mother and your sister. You're a big boy now. You've got responsibilities. You're taking my place as the head of the family. So do everything your mother tells you. <laughs> I will, Pop. Goodbye, Babsy. Goodbye, Daddy. Study good and, and don't stay out late. I don't have to tell you to watch out with the boys. You're a big girl now. I trust you 100%. Junior, write me every week what boys she goes out with. <laughs> well, Peg, take care of yourself. Don't work too hard. I'll, I'll write you every day and I'll send for you soon. It won't be long. <laughs> All right. Now, 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 Peg, no tears. You know how I can't stand people who cry. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Bob. Well, why are you all crying? I'm only going to San Francisco. There's nothing to cry about. You should be happy. I'm going away to make a new life for us. I, I feel like singing. San Francisco, open your golden gate. You let no stranger wait outside your door. San Francisco, <laughs> bring you the second act of the life of Riley in a moment. And now we give you the glamour girl of 49. I'm Tallulah the tube of Prell, and I've got a little something to tell. Your hair can be radiant, oh so easy. All you gotta do is take me home and squeeze me. I'm Tallulah the tube of Prell, and I'll make your hair look swell. It'll shine, it'll glow, so dandruff free for radiant hair. Get a hold of me, Tallulah the tube of Prell shampoo. Yes, for, for glamorous, lovely hair, it's Prell, Procter & Gamble's radiant cream shampoo. Because Prell leaves hair more radiant than any soap shampoo. It can't leave a dulling soap film. And Prell removes embarrassing dandruff in as little as three minutes. Doctors' examinations proved it. 
So give your hair that radiant air. Try Prell Shampoo. Before rejoining the Rileys, here's some news for our friends in Texas. The new Life of Riley motion picture opens in 100 Texas theaters starting tomorrow. And the star of the movie, Riley himself, William Bendix, along with other members of the cast, will make personal appearances in five theaters. Tomorrow, they will be in Fort Worth, Monday in Austin, Tuesday in Houston, Wednesday in San Antonio, and Thursday in Dallas. Yes, sir, this week, the great state of Texas is living the life of Riley. And now back to the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. And we find Riley en route to San Francisco, determined to make a fresh start in life. Excuse me, lady. Is this seat taken? Why, no, it isn't. It's okay if I sit here? Oh, go right ahead. I <laughs> Oh, say, that's a, that's a cute little baby you got there. Babies are crazy about me. Kitchiku, kitchi, kitchi. Oh, dear, he's hungry. Oh. Would you mind holding him while I see if I can get him some warm milk from the dining car? Hold him? Oh, oh sure. Just, just give him to me. Oh, thank you. There. Now, you be a good little baby, lambikins. I won't be long. <laughs> No, 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 there, there, there. No, don't cry. I know just how you feel. I guess you're leaving home, too, but don't you cry. You, you be brave like me. It's all for the best. There comes a time in everybody's life when they got to make a change. <laughs> and I think the time is now. No, 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 don't be a crybaby. You ain't the only one who's got trouble. I feel like crying, too, but I don't let myself. <laughs> now, let, let, let's try and forget our troubles. We won't think about them. We'll, we'll look out the window, huh? You like that? And look, look at all those pretty billboards. Look at that pretty lady. She's a movie actress, Jean Crane. You, you see what it says? Now playing apartment for Peggy. <laughs> oh, my little Peggy. <laughs> no, 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 no. Stop crying. I, I can't stand cry, baby. Now, look. Look, there's another pretty sign. That's an ocean and the beach. Swimming sun in Santa Barbara. Barbara. My little Barbara. My baby. No, no, I stop If you can't control yourself, I won't let you look out the window. I'll give you one more chance. Look. Look, there's a funny sign. You see the man with the bare feet? Oh, look how big they are. That's funny. <laughs> that, that one says, feet burn, use absorbing junior. Junior. <laughs> oh, junior, my little junior. <laughs> I can't stand it. I want to go home to my family. Glendale, next stop, Glendale. Glendale. I'm getting off here. I can take a streetcar home. <laughs> Oh, shut up. I got my own troubles. <laughs> I wonder where that streetcar line is. I've been walking over an hour. Looks like I wound up in some kind of a park. I wonder where I am. Welcome to Forest Lawn. <laughs> it's you. Yes, it is I indeed. Beyond the digger. <laughs> you look tired, Riley. Uh, you ain't kidding, digger. I'm ready to drop. Well, you've come to the right place. <laughs> oh, my feet. Is it okay if I lie down here? Certainly. But keep your eyes open. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll miss the beautiful scenery. What are you doing here, Digger? Oh, this is where we hold the weekly meeting of the UEPPC. UEPPC? Yes, the Undertakers, Embalmers, and Paul Bearers Pyramid Club. <laughs> it's a fascinating game. Every Undertaker brings two people. And pretty soon the Undertaker on the top of the list has more people than he can handle. <laughs> but what are you doing here, Riley? I thought you were bound for San Francisco. Well, I was, but I got off the train. I just couldn't stand being away from the family. Oh, yes, I'm the same way. I left my family only once. That was last year when I attended the annual Mortician's Exposition in Tombstone, Arizona. <laughs> Believe me, there's a dead town. 
And I was the lonesomest stiff in it. I'm kind of ashamed to face my family again. Did Nonsense. It? You've made a wise decision. Los Angeles is your town. Your home. Yeah, you're, you're right, Digger. It's the greatest town in the world. They can have all of San Francisco. All I want is a little plot of ground right here. And someday you'll get it. <laughs> Real estate prices are dropping every day. Now you must hurry back to your miserable family. I'm sure they miss you. I'm leaving now. I'll drive you home. Oh, well, that's swell of you, Digger. You know, this is the first time I've ever been here in Forest Lawn. And this will be the first time I ever drove anyone out. <laughs> well, come along. We'd better be shoveling off. home. Oh, they probably went to a movie to cheer themselves up. Oh, I got a great little family. And I'll make it up to them for what they're going through. I'll get a job right here in town. I'll make good for them. Where's today's paper? I'm going to answer every single ad. Where's that paper? Oh, here it is. Now, where's the classified ads? Holy smoke, look at that. Butter, 40 cents a pound. Hamburger, 29 cents a pound. Oh, oh. We're like to hold a peg and show her this. Trying to tell me that prices are so high she can get more dough out of me. Oh, ha, ha. I have to get up pretty early in the morning to fool Chester Rally. Where are those ads? Oh, look at the size of that headline. These papers. They take the least little thing, make a big sensation out of it. Japs attack Pearl Harbor. Where are those ads with... Japs attack Pearl Harbor? Again? Arthur, what's he doing over there in Tokyo anyway, playing Mahjong? <laughs> I gotta report to the plant right away. This is no time for foolish pride. My country comes first! <laughs> You say he went to San Francisco, Mrs. Riley? Oh, yes, Mr. Stevenson, this afternoon. But I thought if you wrote to him, he'd come back. After all, he didn't really break that machine. Well, don't worry, Mrs. Riley. I'll get him back here. And, and please, don't tell him that I came to see you. Mr. Stevenson. Riley, what are you doing here? I got off the train, and lucky I did. Stevenson, I'm willing to take my job back. This is no time for personal pride. Duty comes first. And at a time like this, we vote. Put out that light. What? Put it out, I say. Don't you civilians ever learn nothing? He's drunk. <laughs> I'll overlook that crack, Stevenson, because this thing is bigger than both of us. We fought it through together once and we can do it again. And like before, I'm taking my position in the front lines. The man behind the man behind the gun. Really? We're all in this together now. We gotta work. Save fat. Save gas. Is this trip necessary? Lucky Strike Green has gone to war. <laughs> what are you raving about? Don't you know there's a war going on? Isolationists? What war? Japan has done it again! Wait a minute. We're at war with Japan? Don't you read the papers? Of course we're at war. Since when? Since then. Here, look, look. December the 7th, 1941. They not only picked the same date, they picked the same year. <laughs> Darn clever, those Japanese. <laughs> Wait a minute. December 7th, 1940. I take back what I said. I don't want to work for you, Stevenson. I got my bride, you know. Oh, come now, Riley. As long as you didn't go to San No, Francisco. sir, I ain't going to work for you. The only time I'll ever work for you, Stevenson, is when the enemy attacks. Chester A. Riley. The enemy is attacking. I report for duty. <laughs> Turn in just a moment. When you want your hair to look its radiant best, does dulling film and unsightly dandruff spoil its appearance? Then it's Prell for you, Procter & Gamble's radiant cream shampoo. 
because Prell removes embarrassing dandruff in as little as three minutes. Doctors' examinations proved it. And Prell leaves hair more radiant than any soap shampoo. Radiantly soft, radiantly smooth. As Tallulah says... I'm Tallulah the tube of Prell. And I'll make your hair look swell. It'll shine, it'll glow, so dandruff-free. For radiant hair, get a hold of me. Tallulah the tube of Prell Shampoo. Children, say fat, say gas. <laughs> oh, Daddy, you're a scream. All right, all right, that's enough. Cut it out. Anybody can make a mistake. You got no right laughing at me. Have a little respect. I got my job back, you know. Thanks to me. No, I ain't a bum anymore. I got dough in my pocket. Oh, that's right. You got paid today. You bet I did. I got it right here. 10, 15, 20, 40, 50, 55, 59, 10. <laughs> Oh, it's good to feel money in your hands again. Well, you hand over $35 right away. It goes toward the rent. Oh, okay. Here you are. That leaves me $24.10. Oh, huh. Daddy, I just got to have $8 for school books. I've got to buy them okay, all. Okay, okay, okay. Here you are, $8. Well, it still leaves $16.10. Well, I need $10 to pay Green Spreckles grocery. They gave us credit okay, and I... Okay, okay, here. And we got our final notice from the phone company, $6, and we just got okay, to pay Okay, okay, here. Well, at least I got 10 cents left. <laughs> well, Pop, you owe me that for the three cigars I bought you. <laughs> Hallelujah, I'm a bum again. <laughs> Dr. and Gamble invite you to join us again next week to hear The Life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. The hilarious new Life of Riley motion picture is now showing in Chicago, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. It opens tomorrow in Boston, Fort Worth, and many other cities throughout Texas, Washington, and Oregon. The script is by Reuben Shipp, Alan Lipscott, and Dick Powell. Mrs. Riley is Paula Winslow. Digger O'Dell is John Brown. The Life of Riley is produced by Irving Brecker. And remember, you can still get a lovely rainproof rain scarf from Prell. Simply send your name and address with 25 cents and any size Prell carton to Prell, Cincinnati, Ohio. Be sure to state your color choice, rose, blue, green, or yellow. Remember, that's Prell, Cincinnati, Ohio. This offer good in the United States only. Wash your dishes with ivory snow. It's safe for hands and speedy, too. Lovely hands mean a lovely you. Hi-ho, safe in snow. Wash your dishes in ivory snow. Let your hands tell you why ivory snow is so wonderful for dishwashing. Wash your dishes with ivory snow as millions do. When you see how ivory snow pampers your hands, you'll know it's ideal. It's ivory mild, ivory pure. And remember, it's granulated for speed. No soap made is faster for dishes or kinder to hands than ivory snow. The only soap, both ivory mild and granulated for efficiency. Yes, for speedier dishwashing, for snow white hands, try wonderful ivory snow. And this is Ken Niles reminding you to listen again next Friday when Procter & Gamble bring you a full hour of entertainment. First, Red Skelton, and then... The Life of Riley. Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.